To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 8, Noah and the Flood, Part 1, Context. How many 3,000-year-old stories cause political problems? When in the late 19th century, British researchers deciphered a 4,000-year-old Sumerian poem called the Epic of Gilgamesh, it caused a political uproar. It was yet another example of how impactful the stories of the Bible have been throughout the history of the world. The British Prime Minister was asked to comment on an archaeological discovery of a character in the epic. His name was Utnapishtim, and his story seemed suspiciously similar to the divine tale of Noah from the Hebrew Bible. As Noah, Utnapishtim was tasked by a deity to build a big boat to save some people and animals from an incoming flood that would destroy everything. And that's not the only flood story out there. So in this episode, we'll discuss the origins, inspirations, and surprising global nature of the flood myth, which appears in cultures from Mesopotamia to Greece to Egypt, and all the way to China, India, Scandinavia, Polynesia, Africa, and the Americas. We'll focus, of course, on the Mesopotamian influence of this flood tale. Let's dive in. No pun intended. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. It's a well-known fact that the emergence of civilizations and uh, agricultural societies became much more prevalent after the end of the Ice Age, which was 10,000, 12,000 years ago. It was a great uh, era of melting and uh, rising sea levels. And there was also the distant memory that we see in the Ten, Ten Commandments with the Greek island that uh, Santorini or something like that, that uh, had a volcano that erupted about 6,000 years ago and then uh, it, it, uh, it was a mini, mini, mini ice age and uh, sea level rose and uh, the Caspian Sea, which is very close to the cradle of the civilization, very close to Mesopotamia, was also much, much uh, larger. Most of the epic tales and the creation stories, they have some secret of distant memory, as we keep repeating ourselves, <laughs> of ancient, simpler times and even magical times. And mm-hmm. here, the distant memory is a traumatic memory. We talked about it in one of the former episodes, the collapse of the Bronze Age, a very, very violent, day-to-day violence, as well as a geopolitical collapse. Imagine you wake up one morning and there's a headline, China fell. Just collapsed. Collapsed. collapsed violently. violently. People are killing each other inside of, of China. And a few weeks later, it's Russia. A month later, two years later, it's Germany. Ten years later, it's the United States, etc., etc. That's sort of what yes. happened back then. Wow. And each time it was very violent. It, was, uh, wow. it wasn't just, okay, we ran out of food, bye-bye. It was always accompanied by great violence. So to that point, if that apocalyptic uh, scenario uh, comes to pass, and it did come to pass in the late Bronze Age collapse, it will affect the entire way humanity tells stories. Mm -hmm. From that point on, for I don't know how many generations, stories will include some great disaster Mm -hmm. in some way or another, or they will become uh, super Bollywood movies. Everything is fine. Everything is awesome. (laughs) I think the, the, the magnitude of the violence created some kind of ripples of uh, waves throughout the, gener- the generation after that. It's no coincidence that the first uh, you know, introduction into the story of Noah is uh, a tale about how people were so evil and they were corrupted and the word is Hamas, which is uh, corruption and violence and stealing and pillaging. Like we said in the episode about... Like Hamas, it's not the, the current uh, Palestinian yeah. organization. <laughs> this is the word Hamas uh, in the text. Go. Yeah. Like we said in the episode about uh, the Garden of Eden, that it was some kind of a distant memory of the hunter-gatherer period, when s- or the early, early, early agricultural period, when stuff were much simpler, and there was some kind of a feeling of affluence. So here, there's some kind of a post-traumatic stress disorder memory about evil, evil people who are pillaging and raping and stealing and killing. 
And this is the context of the Noah story that we will get. And in the, the Noah story, story again. So the context for the Noah story is the Utnapishtim story. So they don't feel like they need to invent anything new. This is not that kind of world. They're not trying to prove a fact. There's no science. This is just everybody knows mm -hmm. that this happened. Everybody knows. No. So, okay, this is how we say mm -hmm. it happened. The story of Noah is well known to everybody, I believe, uh, about a guy that God uh, spoke to him and told him that a flood is coming, a deluge, and uh, that will wipe up out all the evil uh, men that uh, became too evil for his own taste. So I believe that it's some kind of a story in the same manner as Shakespeare's uh, plays were well-known stories that, was, that were just... Uh, let's say, animated or reenacted in a different way while claiming it in their own language. Also, you can have like movies about Rome, about exactly. Greek gods, about Thor. Uh, when Shakespeare writes Hamlet for a British audience with very mem memorable lines, it's actually a Danish tale which occurs like 500 years before, I think, the, the time that Shakespeare wrote it. So it's something like this. It's like a tale that is well known. It's also very common for people to have this some kind of a prehistoric notion of people who uh, looked different and behaved different and uh, followed uh, different uh, f laws of physics. Maybe it has something to do with skele skeletons, maybe. Skeletons? Yeah. Like remains? Remains, maybe, you know you dig some kind of a grave and you see men who are like uh, six feet tall or 180 centimeter centimeters the average height of the people back then with their uh, their diet it was like uh, i think five feet maybe five and a half but feet. Who, who who are those uh, six feet tall Hunter -gatherer. Hunter -gatherer. they ah, were they much were larger yeah mm. their diet was with much more variety yeah diverse yeah diverse much more um, protein uh, they didn't just eat grain or rice or yeah. and just whatever they grow. I see it as some kind of a, a reclamation of a well-known story in the manner of Shakespeare and uh, now Hollywood, basically, and uh, to some extent Bollywood, re retelling a well-known story, a well-known fact. I don't think that people who listen to that story with the Noah character. I don't think the tale blew their minds in its originality. Yeah, it was yeah. like, uh, yeah, I know this tale, but this is the realer version of it. Yeah. The real version of it, the more precise version of it, is the one in my language with my deity. Mm -hmm. I would say that it's, it's not that it's truer. Like, it's just there's this uh, memory of flooding and all these uh, civilizations have uh, have the same thing so there's a the theory that uh, it started uh, 10 11 thousand years ago when the glaciers started uh, to melt and then you had more waters and flooding all over in the caspian sea and uh, especially where civilizations rise in between the rivers so that could be one thing but another thing i had uh, i had a theory the euphrates and the, and, and the tigris the main rivers of mesopotamia they were flooding every year or two and because they had like very high banks apparently when they flooded it came out strong and just destroyed everything then all the minerals and stuff from the rivers then everything could grow anew and it's a new life yeah so maybe it's just like this uh, memory of flooding destroying everything and then a new life yeah coming in and in some ways there was a repetitiveness in this and we can see that there is repetitiveness in the stories that they tell. So I listened to a conversation with the, the person who uh, translated the, the best version, according to people in the know, of the Gilgamesh epic tales to uh, English. And there's, uh, there are all these repetitions over and over and over again in the text, like we see in the Bible. Just something that is popular in their culture because that life is more repetitive. While now there's this meme of all the older generation complain about the new generation because everything changes so quickly. This is our mm -hmm. life experience and this, uh, and this is projected in the art that we create. Their life experiences were, were so different. So when we see all these repetitions, 
it makes sense to try and see the beauty in it as they as they did even though it seems uh, silly and i myself i like repetitions like my favorite uh, singer of all time is the belgian great uh, jacques brel most of his songs include repetitions mm. upon repetitions upon repetitions and there's beauty in it there's beauty in it i like uh, british grime is the uk version of rap and there's some uh, british grime grime is the uk version of rap okay. it's quite different it's okay. very raw but there's uh, also a technique of uh, repetitions there and uh, i like it so in the in the gilgamesh epic tales that were uh in, in, in scripted or not scripted whatever on stones yeah <laughs> something on stones something tick, whatever tick, tick, tick. <laughs> tick, 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 on stones Uh, so this is like the oldest story carved carved, carved. <laughs> <laughs> so this, yes so this is the oldest story that we have it's incredible and Gilgamesh is not the flood hero but there's something interesting about Gilgamesh that is very passive for most of the story which is like Noah we're going to talk about it more in the next episode and the way that we know about about Utnapishtim there might be countless of other stories about mm-hmm. Utnapishtim but just Gilgamesh goes to see him and then he tells the story of what happened to him and he won uh, whatever he can't die yeah he's immortal yeah now and Noah similarly maybe he's the last human who gets to live uh, an extraordinary long lifetime he lives to be whatever 600 years yeah. old his like his lifespan is not capped uh, but we'll talk about that more in the next episode and Noah is a uh... Is more of a tale about the, the deity that controls him and his name and we'll talk about it again in the next episode is derived from the world comfortable or easy going mm-hmm. is not some kind of an epic hero so here we have yes the, the reclamation here is not only a story that is well known maybe you don't even remember the name Utnapishtim or Gilgamesh but you know that it's well-known fact that there was some kind of a flood and people were evil back then and they lived a long time that is a well-known fact for the smart people that are telling the story to you right now then they give you details the deity there is Yahweh slash Elohim and the person the hero is Noah and he's not really a hero so the message here is to downgrade the greatness of the humans To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.